Good evening. Good evening. Happy Monday. Just trying to give everybody a chance to join our live. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is our Monday edition of Wine, Wealth, and Tea. Hello, as you are enter. Glad to all have you. It is a Monday. It's a little chilly here in the Carolinas for Monday, but it is fall. So as we get started, you know how I like to start the Wine, Wealth, and Tea podcast as we're waiting on my co-hosts and then we'll introduce our guests. Um, but I'd like to talk about a couple of current events that are happening right now. And first, I want to send out, um, of course, prayers, consistent prayers um, to schools that are still plagued with gun violence. Uh, this is something that is happening around our country almost daily. It's almost daily. Um, but the ones that we hear about in the news are ones where people's lives have been taken. Um, so we want to just hope and pray that everybody in St. Louis gets through this um, horrible, horrible incident that I heard about today. Another thing that I know about that uh, is going on in the news is over the weekend I heard the cancellation of the cancellation of student debt. Um, so they're not going to go through with it, which is crazy. Like, how do you cancel canceling student debt? So for those that have um, student debt right now, that is anywhere from you know a couple thousand to twenty thousand. Um, if you applied, uh, I don't know what they're going to be doing, but that is something you definitely want to look into um, because student debt is real. I am one of those people that hold student debt and um, definitely, definitely not happy about it uh, hearing this information because I was going to apply. So um, sorry to hear that that happened, but this is the Wine, Wealth and Tea podcast. And as we're waiting for everybody to come in, this is what I like to do. I kind of like to have just a little conversation between me and you before um, the co-hosts arrive and the guests arrive, um, which I do see them entering in. So that's awesome. Another thing I want to do is say thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone that joined me on Saturday um, for my, my first wine event here in Charlotte. It was the, it was epic. It was epic. It was just so, so, so great. I see my co-host has arrived. Let's see there. So I do want to say I came out and supported the, the um, Polare wine event that was Saturday here in Charlotte. And it was just so much love and so much peace and so much um, people coming together and learning about one another. Um, so thank you once again. Please continue to tune in for more information as Polare continues to grow. So I see that train. Are you entering? You're I'm getting here. here. Hi. You're here. I'm waiting to see you. For some reason, I don't see you, dear. You don't see me? No, ma'am. It's all dark. I see you. Wow. Well, I do not see you. I don't you know why. You don't see me? No. Okay. I'll come out and go back in. Okay. Um, while we wait for Tremaine to come out and go back in, yeah, so I just, again, want to thank everybody that was able to... Um, come out to the event and support. That's one thing that you have to do with people that have small businesses that are starting out that are really, really trying their best um, to get their business to grow is attend their events, support them. Um, oh, you can see us both. Okay, so she can see us both. Uh, I just couldn't see you on my end for whatever the reason. So go ahead and rejoin. Thank you. Thank you, Jazzy. Um, so yeah, it was just a great, great event. A lot of people came out and supported. it. We're going to enter her in again. This is what happens when you do live podcasts. So for those that see other podcasts, you know, that are on YouTube and everything, they have it all together and, you know, that's, that's fine. But this is what happens when you do live. So can you see me now? But everybody else can see you. So that's all that matters. <laughs> as long as everybody else can see you. Um, every once in a while, you get a little glitch here and there with the uh, Instagram and that's okay. Uh, so tonight I want to go ahead and talk about, and I hope I'll be able to see him when he joins. And that's going to be strange. Uh, but we have a very, very, very special guest, Mr. Uh, Gerald Griggs. And I don't know if any of you know who he is, but when he gets here this evening, you're going to definitely want to tune in and listen to what he has to say. Yeah. Um, 
let us know when you're ready, Gerald, and we'll go ahead and bring you into the Wine, Wealth, and Tea podcast. This is our season finale, by the way. This is third season. Yes. Yes. So, you know, he is our big closing conversation. So that's that's very important for everybody to know. We're coming back next season. And he is here. Hey. Hi, Gerald. Let's see. Can you see us? Okay, I can see yeah. How's You can doing? see him. I, you know, I don't know what's going on, but I can't see either one of you. But I'm glad everybody else can see you. Yeah, can see How you. are you? Doing great. How are you doing? That's great. Great, great. It's a Monday, and I'm glad that you were able to join us. Thank you so much for taking out some time and your busy, busy, busy schedule um, to come on to the Wine, Wealth, and Tea podcast yeah. for us to be able to have a great conversation with you this evening. I'm excited. Yeah. So can you tell everyone who Gerald is? Okay. Well, I'm an attorney in Atlanta. I've been practicing law for 19 years, uh, born and raised uh, here in Atlanta. I'm also a social justice activist and the president of the Georgia State Conference of the NAACP. So in short, I'm just somebody who likes to get in fights and fight for people's rights. <laughs> Fight people's rights. That's right. That's right. And you know, the, the industry that you're a part of, how long have you been in it? 19 years. I've been practicing law for 19 years. 19 years? Wow. 19 years. 19 years ago. What was I doing 19 years ago? I definitely wasn't practicing law or even thinking about practicing anything on those lines. <laughs> so 19 years in this industry and you are what they call uh you just fight for everybody's rights. Absolutely. You have a tag name, right? Yeah. Justice Hashtag fighter. justice fighter. Justice fighter. That's right. Um, and a lot of people um, definitely know who you are. <laughs> so now with you being a part of the NAACP, how, how has that been? First uh, of all, congratulations been, to you on that. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's been, a, it's been very uh, inspirational and exciting and informative. Uh, and a lot of work at the same time. You know, the NAACP is the oldest civil rights organization in the country. Uh, has yes, been, it is. Has been on the front lines forever, dealing with all the cases from Emmett Till all the way to Maude Aubrey. And it's just, um, it's a blessing and, and an honor for them to choose me uh, to be the president. And I hope that I can be a servant for the NAACP. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, you know, being in law, that, that's, that's just you know, amazing by itself. But was this something that was your dream? This, was this something that you always wanted to do? Uh, yeah, well, I always wanted to be a leader. Um, I didn't always see myself being an attorney. Uh, actually, mm -hmm. when I made the decision to pursue law, I was actually in the 10th grade, and I think I watched the O.J. Simpson trial, and I was like, I don't really know what that lawyer's doing, but I want to do that. <laughs> but so, you liked it. <laughs> yeah, I liked Johnny. He, he, you know, he had the... He was very quick on his feet. He had the exceptional taste in dressing. And, you know, I was like, I, I want to be that guy. So that's when the passion <laughs> for law grew. Oh, wow. 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 That's crazy. So <laughs> that case got your attention as well as everybody else. I can actually remember being in school um, and everybody, you know, screaming when, when the verdict came out. It was like a big thing in the cafeteria. And we were kids. Yes. So that, that shows you how much of an impact that case had on a lot of people, including yourself, um, bringing you to this career. Absolutely. So that was the moment that you realized that you wanted to do law, practice law. That's amazing. So, you know, in, in that time frame, when you decided that, that was the direction you wanted to go, was there a particular problem in the system that got your attention that you knew which side of the, of the law you wanted to be on? No, not at that point. Like I said before, mm -hmm. I, I just saw Johnny given um, an exceptional closing argument and the cross examination during the trial that piqued my interest. It wasn't until you know I got to to uh, Emory and then ultimately Cincinnati that the side of law that I wanted to be a part of, being a criminal defense attorney and a civil rights attorney, is when that actually grew. So uh, when I was a junior at, at Emory, we were still flying the Confederate battle flag. And we led our first wow. protest. And so that led me into activism. And then once I went to Cincinnati and we had the police involved shootings in 2001 and 2002, that's what mm -hmm. led me to uh, want to do civil rights and ultimately want to be a criminal defense attorney. 
Wow. Can you explain to our viewers what are the differences in a defense attorney and the other side of it as well? Some people don't know that there's two sides. Okay, yeah. So you have a prosecutor and you have the defense attorney. And the, the role of the prosecutor is to prosecute uh, the uh, defendant for the alleged violations of the law. The uh, defense attorney job is to defend and to make sure uh, that constitutional rights are protected and that the person has an adequate defense. And so that is the area of law that I um, love uh, and it mm -hmm. also drives me. And so that's why, you know, I, I'm blessed to be on this side of the V. You know, there are a lot of great prosecutors out there, um, but given the problems in the criminal justice system, I just couldn't see myself adding to uh, the prosecution of individuals. Now, there have been isolated cases um, that I have sort of been on the other side, but for the most part, a majority of my career, I've been a, a defense attorney. Well, we definitely need defense uh, defense attorneys out there um, within our community. Uh, that That is a major thing. So one thing that a lot of people don't know and a lot of younger viewers don't know that may be thinking about going into this, this career path is how long is your educational path in law? Yeah, so, of course, you have to do uh, 12 years, well, 13 years of um of high school, including kindergarten, and then you have to do four years of undergraduate study and then three years of law school. So in total, you're in school anywhere between 17, and 19 years, uh, somewhere around there. And uh, mm -hmm. it, it's a lot of study. It's a lot of reading. And it, it doesn't stop once you um, become an attorney, you pass the bar. Then there's even more research. Uh, there's more um, writing that you have to do. It's a very um, thought intensive. It's a, you're very argument. focused. Yeah very focused feel. Very focused. And so, okay. um, you know, it's, it's for somebody who one likes to argue, uh, mm -hmm. but two also uses logic and reason to get to a, a thought out analysis of whatever side you're on. Hmm. Wow. That's very interesting. I remember being a kid thinking I wanted to be a lawyer. And then of course, uh, you, as you get older and then you want to be a doctor, and then you, then as you get older, then you realize some other things and you start picking and choosing. But those were the two career paths, of course, that every child um, thinks that they want to be in when they're younger. So for you to uh, decide to go down that whole long 17, 19 years of schooling, not to mention student loan debt, which um, has now been canceled, which I was just speaking about. Um, I'm quite sure that that, that that is a hefty, hefty bill to have to pay. Um, to have that education behind you to be able to finish your career path. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, to get to this level of education, it's probably going to cost you an upwards of two hundred to two hundred fifty thousand um, dollars. I was blessed to have an undergraduate uh, scholarship to Emory, to Oxford and Emory, and then blessed to have a full scholarship to law school. And so I didn't have to pay all of it. Uh, but that is a blessing, I, you know, but I have been following the student loan crisis that's happening in our country. And, you know, I think that we have to uh, be more intentional in what we invest in and making yeah. sure people are not saddled with a large debt when they are simply trying to get a better education and better themselves. You know, I feel the same way. I don't I don't feel you know, it's two sides to this argument. Some people are saying, you know, well, I did it and, and my parents did it and you just need to pay your debts. But why should we accumulate debt, like you said, to just get ahead, to want to have a better life, to want to, to want to be a part of society and making society a better place? You know, by playing these roles in law and medical and, and, and education, for teachers and, and everything, business owners, business management field, um, you accumulate this debt when all you're doing is playing your part in society. And is that fair? I mean, we have other countries that they go to school and they don't come out with more debt than they came in. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, this this argument of, well, you should have to pay your debts back is, well, I didn't want to be in debt. I just wanted to get education. So I don't think that's fair. That's that's just a whole another argument. Um, I guess that's that part of me is that child part of me that wanted to be a lawyer. That's something I can argue about. <laughs> Still not too late. You're doing a great job of articulating your your, your side of the argument. So I have to thank agree you. with you on that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, you know, you, you said that Johnny and, and the OJ Simpson case was, that was that moment that inspired you. So we kind of touched on that question and that was that moment um, in your life that led you into this path. 
So, you know, now we're going to get down to the, to the nitty gritty, the second, second portion of questioning okay. um, that, you know, we wanted to bring you on tonight because right now, everybody, and I hope that everyone that is watching is registered to vote. And if you are not, yeah. it's not too late. It is not too late. Um, your vote does matter. Don't think that it doesn't. Um, and Gerald, you're going to tell us really, you know, yeah. what, what, what about voting? Why is it, why is voting rights important? Well, you know, voting is the most uh, important and impactful nonviolent weapon that we have. You know, my mentor, John Lewis, always talked about the power of voting and the lives that were laid down for the ability to cast a ballot. But I like to bring it, you know, more into focus. The reason mm -hmm. why we vote is because we don't want to see another Maude Aubrey or another uh, George Floyd or another Breonna Taylor. And it impacts your ability to fundamentally change the system. And, and so it's important that people understand that, you know, in Georgia, we are in the middle of early voting in the most consequential mm -hmm. election we've had in our lifetime. And that's saying a lot in Georgia, considering we've had the last three most consequential elections of our lifetime. Um, but I just want people to understand that we are voting not only to, to earn the respect of our ancestors, but to provide a better world for our descendants. Absolutely. So, you know, you, people need you to know, understand. A lot, of people, yeah. a lot of people will argue it's always uh, important time to vote. It's always we're on the, we're on the ballot. We got to vote. We got to do. This. And I will say it is. It is. Every time that you have to vote, it is important. It's always, you know, at that edge of, of the point of no return. Um, because there's so many laws that keep coming up that we don't even realize. Civil rights is something that is going to always come up until they change that. Um, so that is that is something you want to make sure that you recognize in the city and states that you're in. What laws are going to come up? Because if you don't vote, those laws can go right over your head and you'll look up and go, well, wait a minute. I didn't even know that was on the ballot. That's because you're not paying attention to what's going on in your city and your states, your counties, um, your districts. It's very important to be a part of your districts as well, the, all of those elections. I know a lot of us, especially within our community, and I'll let uh, Gerald continue to talk about why it's so important within our community, that we tend to vote in the major elections and we just fall out when it comes to the, the little elections mm -hmm. um, or the, the centralized, your city, your county elections. But those to me are the most important elections. Um, Gerald, can you really explain why your, our community elections are more important Exactly. Your local elections are the most important elections. And, you know, many of us are focused on the presidential races or Senate races, which are very important. Uh, but in a midterm election, you have all the way down the ticket. So like here in Georgia, you have a governor's race, you have this attorney general's race, you have uh, the state Senate and the state house. And, and even all the way down to some local municipalities may have an issue on the ballot. Um, mm -hmm. But it's important because those races affect your every single day uh, lifestyle, whether that's the labor commissioner or the agriculture commissioner or, or the tax commissioner talking about uh, your, your property taxes and, and the taxes on your vehicle. All these things are happening on that ballot. And if you don't vote, you don't have a voice. Yeah, you don't and have so, a voice. So when I keep saying it's not just about because my ancestors were killed for this right, it's about protecting my child's education. In Georgia, the accurate teaching of history is on the ballot. In 29, I'm wow. sorry, 26 other states, whether or not we're going to teach slavery is on the ballot. So these are important things and reparations in certain states is on the ballot. And so I think people need women's to fully, rights, uh, well, women's I, I, of rights. Course, of course, I'm going to get there. <laughs> you, know. <laughs> um, you know, are on the ballot. And most importantly, in this election, the two most important issues that are in this election are women's reproductive rights yes. and voting rights. Yes. are on the ballot. And so yeah. when people talk about, oh, if I'd have lived in Dr. King's day, I would have done X, Y, and D, Z. Let me be clear with you. You're living in Dr. King's day. Uh -huh. Hello? We have to protect our civil rights, the reproductive rights Daily. of women. We have to protect yeah. our voting rights, and we have to make sure that we teach accurate history. And those are the reasons why people need to go to the polls to make sure their voice is heard. So, Joe, Absolutely. I have a question for you. 
um, for our viewers, um, if they have any type of um, situation that they may encounter while going to the poll, I've had some before, um, where could they reach out or who do they go to with any type of problems they may have when they get to those polls? Absolutely. In Georgia, you can reach out to uh, eight, uh, one eight six six our vote That is manned by the Lawyers Committee uh, for Civil Rights. Uh, which is one of our partners that we use when we have our litigation. They are ma actively doing election protection. I was literally on a call with them two days ago to talk okay. about obstacles to the ballot that will happen in Georgia. So one eight six six our vote. They have phone lines across states, but mainly in Georgia. One eight six six our vote uh, to make sure and I will we have post any that issues, this evening. Yeah, any mm -hmm. issues uh, mm -hmm. at the ballot. Please don't leave without casting a provisional ballot. If they say your name's not on the rolls, please cast a provisional ballot. That way there's a record of you having been there. And let's just make sure that we are all registered voters. Now in Georgia, right. voting registration closed on October the 15th, I believe. Uh, so you can't register for this particular election because now we started early vote. Uh, but you got to make sure that you uh, are exercising your, your, your uh, constitutional rights and make sure that you get everybody to the polls. But in the other states, some of them have same day uh, registration where you can register the same you day. You do in Carolina. Uh, and so mm -hmm. make sure you use that that ability and, and use your voice. In, in, in Carolina, I know there's a big Senate race up there. Uh, and there's several, I think, governor's races in Virginia and South Carolina. So it's a lot of things on the ballot across the South and throughout the United States. Uh, but most importantly, it's the midterms, and it's going to determine who controls the, the House and the Senate at the national level, which is the reason why we need to vote. And, and let me tell you guys, without this election, um, you know, I, I'm not here to take sides. This is what I often tell people. I'm not here to tell you to vote Democrat, Republican, Independent. I'm here to tell you to vote. That's first. But do understand that there are a lot of things that are on the line. Um, you, like you said, you know, women's rights, civil rights, education, student loan debt. Um, we even have issues with water right now in some places that need money. Uh, so funding, you know, all of these things. And, and our communities are really, really at risk for, for having uh, a lot of things taken away from us because we're not paying attention as much as we should. And I'll continue to say that um, we need to go out in, a, in our communities and learn more about the people that are representing you in your districts. That was one of the main things that I did um, when I was purchasing my home in the district that I purchased. I started going to uh, town meetings, city hall meetings, you know, and just learning about what was going to be up for votes, what, what, who were coming to speak, you know, what they were speaking about. I mean, I remember sitting in one meeting where they were talking about trees and how important it was that as the city was continuing to build, housing that we kept the trees and these were things that i agreed with so just go out to your town your city your county whatever join them on their on their social media i do sometimes i don't go actually to, well you know with COVID we couldn't but if you can't make it you can join in and listen and still um voice your opinion live online so that's very important so you know let's 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 get more involved and you know how can people especially young people how can they get more involved so we can get a better turnout? Yes, that was my next Absolutely. question. Absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, one of the things that I, I love about the age that we're in is now that we're in the digital age, it's so easy for people to get involved. Go to a digital town hall. Have a conversation with your elected right. official. Call them on the phone. Everything's listed online now. So if you have a question about your alder person, your commissioner, county commissioner, your represent, House of Representative member or Senate member, in the state level, give them a call and start talking about the issue that you have, whether that's student loan debt, whether that's climate change. You were talking about they were having a conversation right. uh, uh, about um, not destroying the canopy, the tree canopy, the forest can canopy yeah. in, in that in the uh, new development. You talk yeah. about that. Talk about housing affordability, which is a huge issue here in Atlanta. I'm sure it's a huge issue up in the Carolinas everywhere because the the how the, the cost of mortgages and the cost of rent continue to go up does not meet and, what you bring home. <laughs> yeah, pay is not going up. So these are issues no. that are controlled at the local level. You know, when we talk about zoning, we talk about 
uh, the uh, amount of uh, new construction that happens in your neighborhoods. That's all control at the local level. And you elect these people. But most you importantly, yes. one thing we don't talk about in many of the states, judges are directly elected. So when we talk about criminal justice reform, that happens every time you vote for a judge. You can change the course of, of the criminal justice system simply by voting. And most states, if you vote, you are now selected to be on the voter rolls, on the jury rolls, to be picked to be uh, to serve as a juror. So these are important That's things right. that you have to take into, ex into account when you're having this civic engagement, civic responsibility. And so we have to understand these things and we have to be educated in real time about the power of voting and what it changes. And then most importantly, I tell people to go vote. I tell them to go vote. But I also tell them to have candidate accountability. That means you don't just show up every four years and give your vote and then don't expect anything in return. We're done with those That's right. We want That's right. We want student loan forgiveness. We want to make sure women have bodily autonomy. We want to make sure that there's uh, ec uh, educational uh, opportunities for underprivileged communities and the funding flows to all of the schools. All those things happen when you hold your elected officials accountable. So when we Absolutely. were all marching in 2020 and 2021, we forgot to make sure we hold these people accountable to the campaign promises, but we have to do that in 2022. So make sure you vote, but also hold those candidates accountable. Absolutely. I absolutely agree with that. I had a, um, someone text me earlier today about um, our votes here in North Carolina. And it was like, well, why should I vote this way? And I'm like, you have to vote for what works for you. You need to research the candidates and read up on who they are. Don't just go by what you see in, in the commercials, the YouTubes and the social media posts. Find out your own information. Do your own research and see if they fit your lifestyle and yeah. your choices and if they represent you, you and your family. Um, and sometimes you'll find that it won't always align with the party that you thought it was going to align with. And that's okay as long as you vote. And that's, that's my biggest thing. Just go out here and vote, people. So I will make sure I put up the, the number, which is, again, one eight six six our vote That is for Georgia. If you're having any, any issues at all, make sure you give that number a call a call um i want to go ahead into a couple other things of you know let's talk about some of your cases because just because you've been involved in civil rights things and voting and all of these things so so as of right now but what are some of the cases that you've dealt with over the years okay well i've been involved in georgia's longest case which is the atlanta public schools cheating scandal trial and then wow. i represented several of the accusers and families uh, that was subject to the criminal behavior of Robert Sylvester Kelly, also known as R. Kelly. Uh, and mm -hmm. those are just a few of the cases. You know, I've handled high profile murder cases. I've handled voting rights cases with Fred Gray, who was the architect of the civil rights movement uh, in the 60s with Dr. King's Dr. King's lawyer. He was uh, Claudette Colvin's lawyer. He was Rosa Parks lawyer. And I handled several uh, voting rights cases with him. Uh, and mm -hmm. I've handled, uh, like I said, a lot of high profile cases. Uh, throughout the state. I was involved uh, in the advocacy and some of the legal work in the Ahmaud Arbery case. Um, so I, I've handled quite a few cases uh, that people know. Wow, that's amazing. It's beautiful that you've been a part of so many yeah. cases that are in, within our history right now. Uh, is, it, is it hard when you don't win a case? Mm, no, I think every case no. is an opportunity to learn. I think I gained okay. my greatest um, legal lesson in the APS case that I did not win. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, I like to win. I win more than I lose. <laughs> of um, but, course. You know, I don't win all the cases. Uh, and mm -hmm. I think that in order to get justice, sometimes it's not about winning all the time. Sometimes right. it's about the process. And I think right. the process is about being fair and getting to the ultimate outcome. And in many of my cases, the ultimate outcome is justice. And so I, I consider even some of the losses wins. Okay. That, that makes perfect sense. I mean, some people, you can't win them all. Yes. That's number one. <laughs> so can you explain to our community why law is something that, how, how does it benefit us? A lot of people feel like 
and I, I, I used to be one of those people. The laws within our country don't apply to me. So why should I care? So can you explain why it does apply to people of color within this country? Well, because we had great lawyers like Thurgood and uh, Fred Gray and Donnelly Hollowell and um, Constance Baker Motley, who even though the law was not written with us in mind, um, mm -hmm. made the law be what it says on paper for everyone. And it's incumbent upon the next generation of lawyers to make sure that equity and equality continue in this spectrum of justice. You know, Dr. King always said that the arc of history is long, but it bends mm. toward justice. Well, the lawyers say the arc of history is long and we bend it. We bend it toward bend it. justice. And so uh -huh. that's why I think, you know, people of color, particularly black people, uh, need to understand that, you know, the law does apply to us. That's right. And just because sometimes the law is not fair does not mean that we don't work to bring mm -hmm. the fairness that we want to see in the next generation. So, you know, uh, my thing is I, I am a law and order kind of guy. But okay. that means that law and order applies to everyone. And so That's when right. I see things that happen in the Capitol on January the 6th, it disgusted me um, simply because that's not law and order. Um, no. So it's incumbent upon me as an officer of the court to make sure that law is fair and balanced and everyone's held accountable. Same thing you with these police involved cases. Many of these police involved cases are not just and do not yeah. follow the law. And I'm not ashamed to say that, which is why you have lawyers like Keith Ellison who made sure Derek Chauvin was held accountable. You have lawyers like Benjamin Crump and Lee, Lee Merritt that go around this country and make sure that the scales that people are held accountable. Aren't, tip, aren't tilted. Yeah. So that's why- I was I just gonna ask that question about balance um, in our, uh, our courts right now. Do you feel that the Supreme Court is balanced right now with all the decisions that are upcoming? Um, is there a balance? Is it more political than it is law? Well, I think the Supreme Court has always been political, um, okay. but I think it's incumbent upon the next generation of litigator to litigate cases all the way up to make precedent. You know, I am a firm believer in precedent, uh, but sometimes, you know, the Supreme Court is on the wrong side of precedent. You know, for, you know, hundreds of years um, before Brown versus the Board of Education, uh, we didn't have civil rights. And so now seeing what happened in the Dobbs decision, overturning Roe, um, I see an opportunity for lawyers to step up and to litigate these issues. Because what people need to understand is the law is a process. The law is always evolving. And we have to make sure it yeah. evolves in the correct, progressive manner and not a regressive manner. And so I think right now, the makeup of the Supreme Court um, is slightly conservative. Hmm. But, you know, I was blessed enough to actually meet the architect of this current iteration of the Supreme Court in Justice Anton Scalia in my first oh, year of okay. law school. Okay. Oh, wow. And so, you know, Justice Anton Scalia believes uh, that the Constitution should be interpreted the way it's originally written. And at that point, um, I wasn't an originalist. I am an originalist now. Okay. Um, which means that the Constitution should be read the way it's written, okay? Hmm. Which means that the Bill of Rights and the Constitution have no exceptions. So why are we oh, carving wow. out exceptions? There should be no yeah. exception to the Fourth Amendment. There should be no exception to the 14th Amendment. There should be no exception to the 15th Amendment. So if we really are going to be originalist, y'all are the activist courts. Because... Right. Roe was rightly decided. And if we start to roll to unravel, stuff, you start you, know, you you go down you go down a rabbit okay. hole and that's what I was going to get to next. That's right. And that's that's what I was going to say. This this uh Roe versus Wade, this whole thing it's just the beginning. And people are like, you know, oh that was just a one off and then some people are like, no. And I look at it as no, this was just a start because like you said if we start taking pieces and you know taking it apart oh well it meant this and meant that no it shouldn't have done this it shouldn't have done that then you unravel everything over centuries now of law 
Yes. And then it's like, well, what was the point of any of it? We're right back where we started. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, again, that's why it's incumbent upon lawyers. And, and that's one of the things when you ask me, you know, about my experience in law, one mm -hmm. of the greatest lawyers of all time lost a lot of cases because the only way you get to the Supreme Court is to lose mm -hmm. and then appeal. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about Brown. We don't talk about the hundreds of other cases that you had to lose in the lower courts to get a Brown. To get there. Yeah. So, you know, that's why I think it's incumbent upon young lawyers to understand that it's a process to justice and that Absolutely. it's not always about winning, but you need to win the big one. And so and sometimes it's about getting the story out there for people to hear and learn and, and be able to pick apart and be able to win it. Like you said, the next person can come along and see, see something else in it to win it. Exactly. And so, I mean, right now there's a case in front of the U S Supreme court, Muriel uh, case out of Alabama uh, that may redefine uh, the voting rights act. And we all know people say the voting rights act uh, has been gutted uh, by Shelby County versus Holder. And that's not entirely true. The plea, preclearance clause of the Voting Rights Act is no longer uh, good law because of the formula. But mm. Section 2, which allows the federal government to sue states for violations of the Voting Rights Act, like literacy tests and, and, and like poll taxes or now like voter purges, is still good law. But this Muriel mm. case, which is a redistricting case, is going to test Section 2. And at that point, you know, even with the Dobbs decision, which attacked uh, reproductive rights. And again, for black women, that should be a clarion call because we all know that reproductive rights cuts at the heart of yeah. black women's rights. But yeah, absolutely. now you're going to have a voting rights decision as well, uh, which is hopefully will be on the right side of, 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 of precedent and, and due process and voting rights. But we are fully expecting uh, more cuts and so that's why it's important, one, for people to vote, because the way, vote. That you, the way that you overturn a Supreme Court decision is, one, either litigated all the way, way back up and overturn the precedent, or for the Congress to, um, to uh, enact a new law. Because what they basically said was there is no constitutional guarantee to privacy. So we need an amendment to the Constitution, or we need a federal yeah. law in Georgia there already is a constitutional right to privacy, which is what they're arguing today. Mm -hmm. uh, in the last which I would, think, I would think, I would think that would really, issue. I would think that would really, really rub a lot of people, no matter what color you are, what side you are, when it comes to privacy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. as much as this country is is hell bent and strong on having their privacy and having their rights, for that part to be taken away, that should really, really bother a lot of people. It, should. it really should. Um, so it's, it's, it's disturbing within itself where people were just, you know, they were glad that this happened. It's like, do you realize, as I tell a lot of people, it, it really wasn't just about being able to be told that you can't make a decision on your body. It was about so many other things. And everybody's just looking on the surface of that, that law being overturned when you have to look deeper into whatever, whatever else is involved in that law. Um, that applies to everybody's daily lives. I mean, I, I would hate to see if there was a law like this for men. I definitely don't think men would like it. <laughs> so, you know, we got to look at it on, on a lot of different angles. Now, um, I want to talk a little bit more about you and your experiences. You know, how did you see another path? Because you're, you're very passionate about law. Um, I can see it's just, it's in you. It's, it's coming through your pores, so you, it goes through your veins. But was there another path that you think you would have taken in life if this didn't work? I mean, I always knew I wanted to be a leader. Um, I right. don't know if I could have gotten to the point that I am now with any other path. Um, so probably not. Um, you know, probably like not. you said, this is who I am. You know, yeah, I like to fight for Absolutely. people. I like to protect people's rights. Uh, I like to hold folks accountable when they you know, violate the law. So no, I don't. I don't see another path. Do you feel like it's it's pressure to be where you at, where you're at right now in your career and and everything that you carry for your community? Do you feel an amount of pressure on your shoulders for that? Mm, not really. 
Um, again, I think this is who I am. So I couldn't think of doing anything else. I, I, I can remember when I first got that video of a young jogger running this into the shores, I knew I had to do something. I knew that, you know, somebody had to do something and we had to make sure that, you know, Georgia was protected. So, I mean, yeah. I don't think it was any additional pressure on my shoulders. It's just, you know, certain things you just feel like you're purposed to do. And I was it makes just going to say that a lot of, a lot of people, when it's their purpose, when it's meant, they just, it's easy for them to just go. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that's when you know that that was your calling and that was who you were supposed to be. Um, how has your life changed? I always ask this question. I'm down to my last few questions and I want to know with COVID as we're coming out of it or still in it and everything else that's going on, flu and everything, how has that part changed your life or did it have any effect on your life at all? I think it sped up the, the maturation of the activists. Um, because, you know, you had a lot of time indoors to refine your skills. So you learn new mm -hmm. skills. Like I would never have learned technology the way I know it now, but for COVID. Um, <laughs> and it also focused me to understanding that our politicians put on a good show about knowing mm -hmm. what's good for us. But the only people that really can legislate and protect us is us. It's and us. So I think all that sped up, you know, it sped up with 2020 when, you know, we were inside and we got bombarded by videos and we decided to go outside and then we changed the course of American history. And then we went back inside a little bit. And now we're here in 2022 trying to figure out what trying to adjust. is exactly. uh, but also understanding that we're in the middle of a new movement. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, how how is it that this new movement that we're in? How can it, how can it, how can we see it through? How can we keep moving with it? Um, so often we, we find these moments in time that this is the moment that we need to work on and then we drop the ball, if that makes sense. You know, like we have these moments, civil rights moments, you know, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, all of these different things, Rosa Parks, and we have that ball and we run with it. And in some place within our community, we drop it as if everything is okay. How can we keep going without losing the momentum? I think we learn from our ancestors. I think that, you know, civil rights movement after Dr. King uh, was assassinated, we took our foot off the gas. People Absolutely. felt like they had arrived, that, you know, as long as you got an education and you bettered your life and moved away from your community, you'd be fine. I think with Mike Brown and Alton Sterling and, and of course, uh, Sandra Bland and then the latest iteration of Ahmad and Brianna mm -hmm. and George, uh, we realized it didn't matter where you went. This will affect you and your family. And so I think keeping that at the forefront of our minds, but also understanding that there was a similar shocking incident that shocked the conscience of black people in 1955, which led to the civil rights movement. And that's Emmett Till. Emmett Shout Till. out to Mamie Till Mobley. Everybody needs to go see that movie, Till, when it comes out October the 28th. Shameless plug Absolutely. for the movie. But Absolutely. you will see that because of black media, and the strength and resolve of a black mother, the world stopped. Mm. That's the same thing that happened with Ahmad. That's the same thing that happened with George. And that image was seared into their minds. We had to keep those images seared into our minds so we yeah. don't lose focus. So, you know, my I, thing is I this. definitely agree with that. So so often we um, people within our community want to, you know, let's let's get past that. Let's not keep dwelling on it. Let's not think about it, talk about it. We, we can do better without it. But unfortunately, our history is what makes us us. Mm -hmm. And if we don't learn from it and build from it, um, we'll continue to experience it. That's how I look at it. Um, so absolutely go and check out the movie. And, you know, um, it, is, it is something to see your history on screen. It is emotional. It is painful. But it is real. It's our history. Um, so definitely go and check out that movie. I was just so, so glad that you were able to join us today and that you continue to inspire others. You're just so inspirational of everything that you're doing and, and all of your accomplishments and how you've stayed within your community to help others. Um, 
but what are some of the challenges that others face within the business that you're in and how can you help, you know, help them beat those challenges, overcome them and understand that they're going to go through them regardless. Yeah. I just think people need to understand one, this is a path. Mm -hmm. um, two, you're going to face adversity and the test of anyone is how they respond to the adversity and that you need self care. Sometimes it's not, it's not, it, it, it's, yeah. It's not a bad thing to take a break every once in a while. You know, okay. enjoy the roses. You know, enjoy your family. Make sure you're balanced. Absolutely. But also Absolutely. realize that your children are looking at you and saying, dad and mom or auntie or cousin or whatever, why are things like they are right now? And what are you going to do about it? Because again, yeah. the lions and lionesses of the old movement are either old or have passed uh -huh. on. That's mm -hmm. right. And it's on us. So when all we when we talk about Martin and we talk about Malcolm and we talk about Megger, they've all passed on. They gone. Yeah. But the question what are we you gonna do ask now? yourself in your Martin moment, in your Megger moment, in your Malcolm moment, what are you going to do? Because yeah. again, Frederick already had his moment. Harriet already had her moment. We're in our moment. And what is That's it right. going to be that defines us? Are we going to allow the alt-right to tell us that we got to go backwards? Are we going to allow the MAGA movement to tell us we are three-fifths of a person? We're not three-fifths of a person. We haven't been three-fifths of a person for about 100 years. Hello. We are going to make sure our children understand and our grandchildren that we were the children of Harriet and we stood up. Absolutely, man. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Absolutely. All of that, all of that. I know that um, we're almost, you know, out of our out of time, and we always like to bring in what we call some tea. So Tremaine likes to bring in a little bit of what we call tea to kind of ask you a couple of questions okay. um, to 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 see what you can give us. That's that's juicy, some good information. So Tremaine, what's your tea? Well, first, before I get started, I got to thank you again, Gerald, for coming on and joining us. I've known him for a very very long time, and let me tell you. When it comes to being an advocate and really um, getting out into the community and having that engagement, you are the man. You represent. When you say mm -hmm. you're a fighter, I've been following you since day one. You are the representation of justice. And I admire you for being a strong man, getting out there, not being afraid, not being afraid of helping reform these laws, getting people educated and bringing them in. I appreciate you. Absolutely. I absolutely appreciate you not take a Thank break you. from COVID because every day you were doing what I expected the governor to do. I'll say it, okay? <laughs> he was updating us every single day <laughs> on cases, who was in the hospital, how many people had it, how many people did not. Like, it was very thorough. <laughs> it was informative. He was not mm. So, I like to our black men don't get acknowledged for what they do. That's right. I'm saying, I'm giving you your flowers and your accolades to say, I appreciate you for what you're doing in the community. Keep doing it. I'm watching you. You never know who's watching you and who you're inspiring. I see you. I've seen you on all those cases with your bow ties on, and I appreciate you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. So the tea I want to ask... <laughs> well, you know, Mr. West seems to like to get on platforms and say controversial things that, that affect, you know, people in the community. And, and when he said what he said about George, you know, I, I just had to say something. Now, I actually said mm -hmm. this uh, about Kanye, that Breakfast Club, that was three years ago. And what he had said was that, the you know, black people need to walk off the plantation and slavery was a choice and all this other stuff. And, and I told Kanye on that platform, you know, you just need to sit down and let the experts and the, and the professionals do this. Because, <laughs> you know, I, I got to give it straight. Kanye, you're a rapper, man. You don't know anything about the law. And so, no. you know, when people say things like that, they need to be corrected on the platforms that they're on. 
And Absolutely. given what he just said about George, and I know George's family, you know, that was just disrespectful. You know, you can have a temper tantrum about whatever's going on in your life. In your home. Focus on Go your home life. with it. Yes, right. Don't bring us into it and don't bring George's family into it. Right. So don't speak for everybody else. Saying. Speak for yourself. I, absolutely. I get it. I get it. I agree. I agree. I mean, that, that what was going on with him is, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot to be said and a lot very like that you just don't even want to say when it comes to to Kanye I'll I'll continue to keep him in my positive thoughts so, sir, <laughs> but that is right now for early voting how are our numbers looking right now for early voting oh man we almost over 800,000 uh we'll probably and be at a million tomorrow here with that what's the difference I've been following you but I haven't gotten an update lately what's the difference from last year well not last year the last time Stacey ran when she was running for governor and now what's the difference that you see well I'll tell you like this the energy that's around this state for change is the difference and of course I'm the NAACP so I'm nonpartisan. I'm just gonna focus people on to get out the boat but what I can say right now is Georgia is hitting at at presidential levels so we wow. may very well see 6 million voters get out just like we did in 2020 and 2021. And the thing that I love about Georgia is, you know, they said we couldn't do it again in 2020 and then we did it in 2021. And now they saying, oh, we won't do it in 2022. And all I see is uh, my black and brown folks saying, you know, hold my beer. <laughs> right. So, right. You know, <laughs> you know one thing I know about this state, we can you, talk you tell us we can't do something, we're gonna do it. You're gonna do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that I mean, I tell you American voices are they're so powerful. We don't understand the level of change that we can make within ourselves if we just get out there, vote, become more active in and our take communities. it. Take it. We've already shown what we can do. I'm just inspired. I know that's right. I've met both candidates that's going for governor. And I met Stacey in 2019. We appear on the 100 women's um, on the conversation. We both won an Emmy together. That was the first time I saw Stacey. And when she spoke, I said, who is this woman? The way she got up and articulated herself and phenomenal. I'm not telling people who to vote for. I'm just stating the candidate <laughs> that spoke, she was able to articulate herself. She was very educated. She knew what she was speaking about. I just see, I see a difference. And I think people are becoming, as they say, the young people say woke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the you think they're waking up? up? You I think they're waking up, Tremaine? I think we are tapping. Yeah, I think, I think people are woke. I hope they do. I hope they do wake up um, because, you know, you we can't stay asleep for too much longer else we're going to look look up and everything can be erased. So, you know, continue to make sure that you go and make your voices heard. Your vote does count. Um, it is counting and it can make a change, but you have to be the person to make that change to do it. Uh, so I want to conclude for this evening. And if you can tell people, how can they follow you? How can they get their voices heard to you if they had something that they wanted you to to learn about or um, a case or something, if anything? How can they get in touch with you? Well, I'm on Gerald. all social platforms at Attorney Griggs. You can go to the website, www.geraldagriggs.com uh, or the NAACP page, which is griggs 4 org on all platforms. Uh, you know, I'm in the middle of early vote season, so I may not get back to you as quickly as I need to, but I will get back to you. And, and just like Tremaine said, you know, in this new digital age, everybody has a voice. Use That's your right. voice. Use your power. We're on the podcast right now. You know, the thousands of people will see. Use your voice. Be on these platforms, educating people and, and, and organizing people and realizing that we are the change that we've been looking for. You that's know, and, right. and that's what I would just say to people. You know, we gonna probably go see Wakanda forever, uh, but we can make Wakanda. We ain't got to talk that's about right. stories. We can actually right. make it happen and and protect this next generation. And it's on us. You know, I'll, I'll leave y'all with this. I had two phenomenal mentors in John Lewis and C.T. Vivian, and you know, the one thing they imparted upon me was. The civil rights movement was just normal people who were sick and tired of being sick and tired. Being sick and tired. Ask yourself, 
Are you sick and tired Listen, of being sick and tired? About yeah. How about it? How about if, it? If Make sure you take yes. this take this interview, take this conversation, pass it around, hashtag it, talk about it, bring up the issues that you want to talk about because guess what? Your free freedom of speech is one of the most important things that you have because your voice can be heard. Right. So thank you so, so much thank again you, for joining us. Um, I hope great. we can have you back soon. And remember to make sure that you take some time and get some self-care after all of this is over. I'll do that That's first right. thing after this election is over. And uh, for my people in Georgia and everywhere else, make sure you get out to vote. Make sure you take five people with you that are registered voters. Don't listen to none of the nonsense or the commercials. Because that's what they are. Commercials. Mm -hmm. right. Go talk to your neighbor. Go talk to your family members. Tell them the importance of this election. We are not finished yet. And Georgia, right. I'm so proud of y'all. I can't wait to party. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll say this. I'm going to take my NAACP hat off for a moment. I've met both <laughs> candidates. One candidate I've known since I was 19 years old. I'm going to say that again. One <laughs> candidate I've known since I'm 19 years old. You take that and you run with that and figure it out and go vote for <laughs> that candidate. <laughs> That's right. Hi. That's right. I want to thank all of our viewers this evening. I see you. I see you. And we're going to just wave to you from here instead of pressing the button to wave each time. Wait a minute, Darren. When you going <laughs> to run what? for office? When you going to run for office? Listen, you know, the people have to tell me when it's time. Right now, I'm working for the people. Right now, the people want me on the front line. So I'm going to stay on the front line. All right. All right. All right. But get ready. <laughs> That's what they keep stay telling ready. me. They keep telling Coming. me. That's right. Stay ready. Well, I appreciate y'all. <laughs> make sure when make sure when you do, you come on back to the Wine, Wealth, and Tea podcast because we're gonna be here. <laughs> well, I I'll tell you this. One thing I learned from John Lewis: you go on every platform that you can. You make sure you stay with the people. So I will be back on this platform. You know, whether I'm the president of the NAACP or anything else. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. you. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time this evening. Have a great and blessed week. And this is Wine, Wealth, and Tea Podcast. Tremaine, you know, we stay on a little bit longer so that yes. we can talk. talk about and, Gerald, you have a great I evening. Run. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jermaine, Jermaine, that was awesome. Yes, I've known Greg for oh a good long time. He's a really good guy. Uh, I, you can never win a debate against him. Like, when he say he's been a leader... I in a good time. I've known him since college. You cannot go against him. The man is very educated. That's awesome. And I'm not saying this because he's been on a flat platform, but he's very educated. He knows his business. He's about business. And as you can see, based on the videos and pictures, like that's him. That's who he is. He's a very That's awesome who he player. is. He's out there. Yeah. 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 I want to make sure that everybody knows if, if you know anyone that you want to be a uh, part of the Wine, Wealth, and Tea podcast for our upcoming season, please make sure you reach out to myself, um, Polare with Chrissy or Healing While Living or whatever other um, platform that you can find us on, email us, and we will see if we can set you up with some time um, to get everything set up for a conversation with us. We are always looking for someone that wants to talk about what's going on in their community and get out there, um, whatever's going on with their business, um, because you are the wealth part portion of this podcast. So remember that we can't exist on this podcast without you, um, and we are a nonprofit podcast. So please make sure that you follow us, like us, hashtag us, and continue to share Wine, Wealth, and Tea podcast. Anything else you want to talk about tonight, Jermaine? No, I missed the beginning on what you, you were discussing. I just, I'm just very excited. Oh, that yeah, you yeah. It at, with the well, election and just talking about a lot of different things. I think it's just really important. You know how passionate I am about the whole women's reproductive system. Yeah. I can't yeah. Talk that too much. Yeah, absolutely. We were talking about that earlier this weekend. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 just it's just unfortunate um, that this is even a conversation that we have to have right now. But it's very important uh, to a lot of us. So make sure that you again go out there and make sure your voice is heard on these ballots. I did want to make one little funny uh, joke about the uh, <laughs> the football game yesterday, and I thought it was funny to me because the Panthers, Carolina Panthers, won against the Bucks. Tampa Bay, yeah. like, Brady, how in the world I did they, I, 
I know you don't watch, but for the, for our viewers that do, you understand. How in the world did the Panthers win against Brady? Like what? This divorce is just wrecking his brain. I'm just gonna say that. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, you know, I I think it's really, really, really messing his game up. Um, so that was a major shocker yesterday. I, I saw the game and I was like, whoa, blown away. So that's my little bit of tea um, for the evening, and I'm gonna let everybody else enjoy their Monday evening, and I hope you all have a blessed and healthy and safe week. We'll see you sometime soon next season, which is yes. next year. So make sure you continue to follow us as we're going to be building out a whole new website and page and much more. Wanda, you're next. I'm coming after you for a guest. <laughs> All right, All right Tremaine, have a good night. Have a good night. Bye.